Hey, how are you? I'm okay, thank you. Uh, let me know when you can see the screen. I just thought I'd talk to you a little bit about something I was thinking about this this morning when I emailed you. <laughs> it has nothing to do with specifically charts or anything with the strategy. Can you see the screen? I can, thank you, yes. One of the things I think I was thinking about this morning is that you are thinking about money so much, but you did this before, but even more so now where it's, it's like almost controlling you. And that happens to people when they get in situations in their life where they're feeling frustrated or they're feeling like they don't have enough money. Every, everybody feels like that when, they, when they're in those positions in their life. And so I just thought about it this morning. I thought you just have to put it into perspective because your happiness and your pursuing your own dreams, whatever they are, if it's to be a professional trader, whatever, whatever, whatever reasons you're doing this for, to work for yourself, whatever, you can't let the money control you because it's only money. I mean, it really is only money. Money comes and money goes. And I think you're so focused on each individual trade, specifically whenever you're in something that it's like a do or die situation. And whether you win or lose in, in any trade that you take, it's just, it's just money. Now, while the goal is to make money when you're trading, that's true. And you need to be focused on it. It's almost like become this thing that is controlling you in a negative way, which, which of course, anytime you have something that's controlling you, it, there's nothing positive about it. So money shouldn't be controlling you, and it's like controlling you now. Although I do think you're not following my strategy alone. You're, you're, you're trying to incorporate with other things, and that's a separate issue and a separate problem and something that you're just going to have to decide what you're going to do about it. Either you're going to just follow me and not do the other things that are in your head that you learned in the past or that you're looking at or you're going to, but money is still a situation, I think, for you where – you can't allow the money to control you and you can't you can't prevent a lack of money from allowing you to pursue your dream if this really is your dream again i don't know if it is but i'm just saying that and that's what i wanted to tell you and that's what i was thinking about this morning right yes thank you yeah um it is it is what i want to do and what i want to um to trade is 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 it yes that is where I want to be in life to trade, trade profitably. Right. So you can't, you, but you can't let the money control you. Do you know what I'm saying? Like the trade that you didn't do. take and then I, you took and then you made money in, which I was glad. I was glad. I'm never going to, I'm never going to yell at you for making money, but I mean, you, you definitely would have been up more Friday and you definitely, you know, I could have made more. And then it was like the money controlled you that you had on in the risk because you were worried about it. You were worried about it. It controlled you. You know what I'm saying? And like, yes, I, I know what you mean because obviously I, I see that. Um, you, you see, it, you see it when you, when, what shall I say? How can I say it? if, um, there's always a chance that something cannot work out no matter what you do. With money, whether it's buying real estate, whether it's you know paying for a, a trading class, whether it's taking an actual trade, whether it's you know investing mm -hmm. in a business if you buy a business, doing something different, or, or there's I mean I could go on and on, and real estate's a big one too. I mean there's always a risk involved when you're doing something with money if you want to get ahead, and not everything will work out. I mean, sometimes things don't work out, just like some trades don't work out. I mean, there's, you're, you're not going to take, you're not going to go after something a hundred times and have a hundred wins. You know what I mean? Well, yes, that is to do with the, the risk that you actually put on the table, isn't mm -hmm. it? How levered you are, whether or not you are, um, you are in, in too heavy or, or whether you are quite comfortable with the size that you have, whatever you are risking, whether it be it property or be it a trade. Right, but I, and that's what I'm saying. Like, there, I mean, people take risk in real estate. Sometimes people take too much risk and it does pay off, but it was warranted. It was a good, a good, it was a good risk. You weigh the pros and the cons. You know what I'm saying? You, you and if it helps you to write it down, you, you write it down. You weigh the pros and the cons. The problem with you is when you're looking now at a trade at a gap at a chart, you're not just focused on the gap. It's almost like to you. 
nothing looks good enough or things that look great to you really aren't because you're not looking at the right stuff. Whereas in the past, you really did do a better job at assessing what was a higher risk trade, meaning or a, a better risk, a better risk for your money, a higher odds is what I mean, that it would that would, what it would pay off to take the risk. And you keep talking about Babas, I'll just say that was that was that was something that you could see that. But now it's like when I'm calling these trades in the market, you, you can't see then and I've called some great trades in the market. And you've you you've benefited from them. You've benefited from them. And so so you can't you're not seeing what you used to see because you're looking at other things. You have, but the, the thing that I found is the time <laughs> scale, which to me it appears that the time scale has changed. You are looking more at them as being... That's true for a, some trades, but it, it hasn't been for trade. the market. But it hasn't been for the market trades. That, that might be for Cisco. No, like, I expected no, Cisco to go. Trade. It didn't. So Cisco's longer <laughs> now, but but not with the market ones. Not with the market ones, no. Yes, um, I, I agree. Some of the market ones are longer, but... It, it's it's judging it's judging how much you want to i mean obviously now i'm set with the amount i'm risking and it's much lower than i was previously putting on but those trades they were they were larger because they were much more from what i could see more focused in where they were going to what do you mean i'm focused on the trades i'm calling in the market i'm having a tremendous amount of conviction or i wouldn't be calling them and I'm turning out to be right above and beyond what many people are saying. I mean, it's almost like I'm like, I mean, I went back and looked today because uh, my assistant did a clip for a sizzler reel for my TV clips. He clipped two TV clips I did where I said what was going to happen well, in the market from New Year's Eve on. It was like, I was like, I listened to myself. I said, oh, my Lanta. I mean, I actually predicted exactly what the market would do. And for you not to have taken any of those trades or held any of those trades, Philip, it's like missed opportunity. Because I, I don't, I don't know when we're gonna get another great trade again. I mean, the one that you're in now, the one contract you have, the one now. But it's like, I mean, you know, it's you don't know. I mean, that's why it's like, do you know what I'm saying? It's like, well, I mean, yes, just... yes. The, I mean, the one I have now, <clears throat> the size is is very small. It's not in comparison with what the other trade was, which obviously could have produced far more than. Than this one will but at the same time yes it's profit but anyways getting uh, back but getting back to what i was saying about the money thing is you're letting the money control you so much now that it's you kind of just have to say like i'm well, not gonna well, let money control to, my you, happiness because yes, if you do that then you you're stuck to. in a you're stuck you're stuck and then all of a sudden nothing works and you're miserable. And that's kind of like where you are, I think, a little bit. It's kind of like where nothing is good enough. No, nothing is, makes you happy. No no good trade is good enough. Nothing is big enough. Nothing is, you know, you're like, No, uh, I wouldn't say no good trade is good enough. No, definitely not. It's very nice when you have a good trade and you get a winning trade. Yes, I agree. But you have to be realistic with what you have in front of you you can't I know, but you could have been more pitch. realistic in the past than you weren't and so now you've gone the other way completely it's like you've gone from right to left or left to right it's like you had these huge expectations and now you're like okay now i'm in reality it's like somewhere in the middle is basically where i picked this picture where you see like okay this is where my dreams are created because again not everything is going to be easy not everything is going to be huge but not everything is in the toilet you know what I'm saying? So it's like somewhere yes. in the middle is where you, is where your dreams are, and that's where you have to create them. Because if you if you're thinking unrealistically that everything's going to be huge and some dream target, and you're going to make tons of money and blah blah blah, that's not realistic. But if you're thinking so negative that well, it's not even worth trading anymore because I can't think I take that much size a day trade. Well, I can't even do this. I can only take. Well, I shouldn't even hold it because I'm going to. It's like you're, you know, I mean, it's like you're, you're like, you know, you've gone the other way. You've gone like completely tilted where you're, where, like I said, where you're killing trades at break even that are perfectly fine and that you could have got out of with more money the day before or held and made more. So it's like you've gone the other way. That's what I'm saying. You've gone the other way. So you need to find your way back to the, to the median, to the middle, which is where you're going to be able to manifest your dreams because you're not going to be able to manifest them where you are right now in this negative place and you're not going to be able to going back to where you were where everything was la la land because that's not realistic either. It's like me thinking four years ago that I was going to have a TV show in 2015. I did believe that. I believed it. I met people. They told me that. 
they, 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 they took money. They didn't do anything. I mean, they cheated me. I mean, I could go on and on about stories that I had. But at the point, at, at, but, but that doesn't mean that I can't still make my dreams happen. So you go from one point to the other. I know I've been there and things with my life. I'm, I'm speaking from experience. I'm speaking from experience. You have to find your way back to your dreams if this is your dream so that you can be at a place where you think positively and you can believe that the dream can happen. The dream is not that every trade is going to be huge like Baba, but some will. And if you don't put you in a position to look at things right, you're going to miss those trades. Yes, but isn't that... <laughs> but this is all related back to the one thing that we can control, and that is risk. How much we risk on a particular trade. What do you mean? You can control it. it. You can control how much you risk. You can control it. What are you talking about? You're the one that's taking the trade. Nobody's taking the trade for you. You're taking it. Yes. You can control it. Yes, yes, I am. I am. Obviously... When I, was, when I was really doing very well, I was putting a lot more on the table. Now, That's what I'm saying. Get, We're the other end of the spectrum. That's what I'm yes, trying to explain yes, to you. Because, because I've, had a sec, I've had a few that haven't worked for me. As luck would have it, I happen to have picked the ones that haven't worked But that's what me. I'm saying. You, on a, on a practical level, you're not following my system strictly. You're doing other things and incorporating it, which I said that is a problem for you and you need to stop doing. And you're saying, well, I can't. I can't delete these things from my head. But I'm telling you, you need to. But either way, you were still at the other end of the spectrum speaking about money terms, wanting more risk to reward in those trades than they were willing to give. If, and the fact that I, I joked about the other day, that you're up 83% in a trade. I mean, you were you used to be up 40, 50% in a trade, 60% in a trade, and not get out and lose in the entire trade. Now, I don't think you do that now, but you did before. So yes, money-wise, but the numbers were different then, weren't they? But it doesn't matter. That, that that's just you're just proving my point. The numbers were different. Where you're risking more. Where if you risk four and you make two, you would be thrilled to have two thousand dollars in a profit in a trade right now. But before you weren't because you risked four. So somehow that was bad, and then you lose four when you were up two. So you really lost six. You see what I'm saying? It's like yes. that's what I'm saying. You've gone from one end of the spectrum to the other. You've gone from far right to far left, and you have to find a way back in the center where is a balanced way where you follow the system strictly and use whatever money guidelines you have to for your risk at this point, but still having an attitude where you can create the dreams that you want, that you can go back to a place where you're risking more, but you have to stay in the center when you're evaluating things, when you're looking at things, not being totally negative, and also not feeling like everything is going to go to a dream target not killing trades break even and not holding everything to the end of the world though it goes to some crazy number there's a, there's got to be it's called balance and it's about the control where i was saying at the beginning where you can't allow money to control you because because you shouldn't it's just a thing and even if you lose your whole account you're still alive and it's not the end of the world you go out and get a job and make money and come back and I don't want well, that yeah. to happen to you. I'm just saying it's like you got to yes. get some perspective on it where you're like, hey, you know, you know, if you're all in, you're all in. It doesn't mean you risk your whole account. It just means like you're all in and you're committed to doing this and you're really going to do it. And it's not like where you're going to let the money control you, where you're going to you're it's not you. You say you can't control things. You can't you can't move a stock. That's true. That's true. But you can just you can control the way that you're looking at things in your evaluation of the gap and you can control your attitude about the trade per se as far as what's happening thinking positively or not in choices so it's like you can you can control what's going on in your life feeling good about something or feeling bad about something and i'd be lying if i said sometimes it's like where you feel bad about something and you ruin a trade because you felt bad about trades that were good trades i called that you ruined in the last two weeks you did that if you felt better about those trades that you killed, you would have you would have been in them and you would have made money in them in the market. You didn't feel good about the trades. And even before, the ones, some that you didn't even take, you know, you didn't feel good about it. You didn't, you didn't, you weren't happy. That's what I'm saying. It's like the money's controlled you so much now where you're almost like in a, you're like in a, you're like frozen a little bit. The money's controlling you. The money has, has, it's controlling you. Well, it is to the res in the respect that you would like a certain figure out of a trade, wouldn't you? That's that I suppose that is control. No, but I mean it's controlling you like where you're making poor choices is what I'm saying. Not taking certain trades, 
taking certain trades and then killing them. That's the kind well, of thing I mean. Yes, yes, there were there were a number of trades where I did believe that they were they had the potential to fail. Hence, I didn't take them. If you hadn't taken three hundred dollars off that market trade the day that we gapped down, whatever day that was, I don't know Thursday. I just don't even remember anymore. You would have, you would have, you, I don't know what you would have been up or down, but I guarantee you would have got out. You would have got out with a partial loss, even if it was down. Again, I'd have to go back and look at the price. And you'd have no, to tell me, you you would have got I, out. I, I know that you would have. You would have because you would have been worried well, about Alyssa, what you had on in risk because you had fifteen hundred dollars on in risk. I was, I was expecting the market to do what it did. As Why? Said, ew, Why were you expecting, expecting it? That's what I'm saying. Where that. your head is screwed on wrong. But that's you not, are expecting that, things no, that have nothing to no, do with anything no, at all. It, no, I won't. I, I don't think that's quite right. But I did look at look at the chart and think this has the potential to come back. So, do you think that you can predict where somebody's going to go better than me? No, I don't. I, I think you do. It's obviously, obviously not. No, I don't. The market's continued on. It's, so I was right. So I was right, correct? So if no, I'm right, you are right. You're right. So if you I'm right, right, then why not take my trades? Why even it, concern yourself with what you think is a pullback? Why even but, concern yourself? If you know Melissa is going to be right more than she's not, I'm just going to take the trade watch where it goes, close my eyes and get out when I'm up. I mean, that's literally where you have to be because you're, you, because you're overthinking it and you're, and you're thinking that you can figure out something better than I can. You can't. No, 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 no not at all. Yes, no, you are. I, I don't, I don't. You're like, I was that. expecting it to do that. So, so then what? So then you didn't yes, do the trade or you killed day, it. For one day. But who that's, cares? That's... Nobody cares. No one cares at all. So I, yes, if I'd left the trade on. Mm hmm instead of taking the $300, yes. yes, I would have been up a lot by Friday's close. And what would have been wrong with that? If you just closed your eyes and say, I know Melissa said it's going to go here, boop, and then it does. Whether it takes 24 to 48 <laughs> hours or 36 hours, who cares? Nothing in this case, because it did it, and obviously now it's Harry hindsight. We are, we are looking no, at No, but this it. is, I mean, but I could give a hundred examples. I could give a hundred examples, because you are so obsessed where the money is controlling you. You're worried, I'm going to be down. It's going to pull back. Yeah. I'm going to be down. That's what you're thinking in your mind, and that's where the money, going back to the beginning here, I don't want to try to get talk about charts tonight. I'm saying where the money is controlling you. The money is yes. controlling you. Yes, and, you, are, you are right. The money is the money now is controlling me because I don't want to be without it. It's a simple. But I'm that. telling because you we that we are stuck as traders I, I, without money, aren't we? No, we I'm telling you that let it go. It? I'm telling you let it go. You're still going to be alive, and you're an adult man. And even if yes, you, even if the trade yes, doesn't work, and you lose the money, that you have to find some other means. But that, that's what you have to do to start you know, living. You can't just go and rob the nearest bank. No, can you? You, you, get a, you go get a you go get a job. Then I'm telling you, once you change your attitude, you are you are letting this money control you so much that you're not going to be able to achieve your dreams. That's a problem. Life doesn't support that. You're, you're in a place where you're stuck. And until you start to think like, you know what? I don't give a crap. I'm going to pursue my dream to do this, whatever it takes. Yeah. If it means that, I'm going to have to go out and get another job while I'm doing this. So be it. I have yes. to do whatever it takes. I'm going to not be afraid to take the trades or take a class or do, do whatever. I'm going to do it. I'm going to follow what she says. I'm going to believe. I'm going to have confidence. I'm going to, have, I'm going to act like a man who is in control of his own life instead of having this money thing control me. Do you see what I'm saying? So when no, you start am, to have that attitude, you know, I, I am I am in control. I am in control. Hence, I am controlling the risk which is laid on the trade. You are squeezing the life out of it. You're choking on the money. It, you're, it's killing you. Am I? Yes, <laughs> yes. The every I. It's like I can't predict. In fact, the room predicted it. I didn't even predict it. I said, "What do you think Philip did with this trade?" Oh, it killed it. They all said it, and they were right. <laughs> They were absolutely, they were right. I didn't even have to poop. I mean, this was before we talked in the thing what? in the room. They said, oh, you got out of it. I'm sure you got out of it. And everyone would have guessed that you got out of it Thursday if you hadn't gotten out of it Wednesday. But the point was that but it's you like... you left the question very ambiguous, didn't you? It, you it, was, it was a case of what are you going to do with it? And I asked, I asked you for advice on that trade. 
whether or not I should hold it. But I gave you advice a couple of days ago. To. Follow your trading and plan. It, Get out it, if you're up between 60% and 100%. It wasn't even at 50%. If you had made $750, <laughs> it would have been more than twice. what you made. It doesn't even matter. I don't want to talk about the specific trade. I'm just using it as an example where the money's I choking you. Yeah, example. I don't even want to talk but, specifically. I just am saying in general, I've noticed, and you have to think about what I'm saying tonight because I'm giving you good advice. When you allow money to control you and things that you want to do with your life, whether it's trading or something else, you're not going to be happy. It is a disaster. Road. It is a road to hell. I'm telling you right now, when you give away your own power as a man to this thing called money, it's going to manifest itself into negative occurrences that will just continue to spiral in the downhill road. You're not on a path that's going to get where you want to be. So you got to find your way to balance into the center because when you let money control you, you're never going to be able to achieve your dreams. And, and, and eventually you say that you're happy now, eventually it will make you angry. It will make you sad. It will make you depressed. It will make you miserable. That will create other problems. And because people look to other things when they're unhappy that they look to then to make them feel happy, that create another problem in their life, whether they're health things or bad relationships. So I'm telling you that get yourself back in the center and stop allowing money to control you. Worst thing that can happen is you lose the money of risk in the trade. And worst thing that can happen is you have to go out and get another job. If that's the worst thing that can happen, it's better than having this money thing control you where you're killing trades when you're up a little or when you're break even. You, you, you're you like stuck in this place. If you want to grow your account, you have to do something about it. I was trying to help you do that with your trade because I knew that was a good trade, but you, you got out of it. I, I want you to think yes, for yourself well, a little I'm, bit about well, it. You know, you know me well enough that I would sit and I would hold any trade and I would let them run. But that particular trade, I didn't know whether to jump ship or not because of the answer that you No, because you're too, you don't read a chart right anymore. You're worried about it pulling back. But I back. asked you the, the question. Was, Follow your training plan. That's going to be my answer every time. Between 60% and 100%. Between 60% and 100%. Between 60% and 100%, I think, is a good right. place to get out. You, I don't know what the exact high of the day was on Friday. I think it could continue. But if you had gotten out Friday, I know you would have been out more, more money than you were the previous day. But either way, it's again, it's not about one specific trade. It's just yes. about being in the center using common sense. And I go yes. back to yes. IBM because that was a trade. I don't think it used common sense. So, I mean, it's common sense is very important with this where you can achieve your dreams if you think about it in a more balanced way. There is some times you're going to be surprised when the market's going to give you something big unexpectedly and you're going to be joyous and happy. It's going to be amazing. But you can't, you can't fall into every huge success just like you can't fall into every trade that loses. And the, the mistake that people make is that when a trade doesn't lose or you have even two losing days in a row or two losing trades or three losing trades or whatever it is, then you fall into that thing of the negative thinking and feeling like, you're out of control. It's out of control. The market's controlling you. Money is controlling you. You don't have control over anything. You decide in your mind that you're going to take control of the situation. And really, I'm telling you, when you think like that, even though you can't move the market or a stock, it, you, you it, somehow it works. I'm just telling you. I just know. It's like walk around like money doesn't control you. It, you're you're in control. It's you're in control yes, of the money. Yes, I have I have done that. Yes, I have. I'm, yes, I'm quite capable of doing that. I mean, I have these three trades on at the moment. I have the SPY, Cisco, and then TAP. And that's fine. That's perfectly fine. But I'm just saying, in general, like if I said, where do you think you're going to be 1231.19? I don't even think you could say anything to me that would be totally positive or optimistic because you're in a mental state right now that isn't positive about money. If I said, how much money do you think you could have in your account by 1231.19, which is a long, long, long way away, where do you think you're going to be by then? I'm not sure yes, you could come up with an yes. answer. That that is a little problem. Yes, <clears throat> that is a little. So then problem. you don't have any. That's what I'm saying. The money's controlling you, and you don't have any direction. Like you don't even believe that you're going to achieve the goal that you want, and you're not even sure what that is at this point, other than that you just want to be successful. Like in your mind, you can't even picture what you want. It's not even. You can't even conceive of it, and that's problematic. But you can change that. Making the decision is the hardest thing. Or the easiest, depending on where you are. But one thing I know is you do have to do it. And if you don't have a clue, then the then even expecting anything to happen that's going to be what you want will not be what you get because it's going to be what you want. And you're going to continue to stay in this cycle. So you're in like a cycle here and you are in a rut and you need to get out of it. And I'm saying this to help you because I want you to get out of it. Yes, thank you. I do need to get out of it. 
You're not the only person. Everybody goes through periods where they feel like this. I mean, they really, really do. Whether, again, it's some, it could be something like a divorce. It could be something where they lose their job. It could be trading. It could be real estate. It could be a million different things. People go through downturns in their life financially or where they feel like money is controlling them. And you really have to fight it. You really have to like fight it like a tiger because it, because it is such a big thing where it just is. And so if you don't, if you're not going to claw yourself back and fight back like a tiger, it's going to, it's going to overrun you and it will win in the end. And then yes. you're going to end up not being able to trade. So, you know, you have to, you have, now is the time that you can fight back. I kind of wanted you to fight back a little bit last week, because if you had had a really good trade, that would, it would have helped your account, the trade in the market, even though you had more risk on, if you had another extra $1,500 in your account, $2,000 in account, it would have been great. It would, yes, it would, and it, it nearly, it nearly did happen. It nearly did happen. Why would you? What would you? Did you go back and look? Did you actually go back and look? What would you have made? Would it made Friday? What you would have been up? Um, well, I actually put another trade on. Well, the one I called, another one too. Yeah, I put one on the. Um, I think it was the two seventy seven. I think I took, and I made another. Um, 300, 300 something dollars. Well, that's fine. That's good. But the original one, the one you were in? Uh, the original one, well, it's up about $50, I think. The one that, uh, the, the one that you called. No, the one you got out of that you had $1,500 at risk. Oh, the $1,500 risk. Yes. 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 Well, that would have obviously done because it was a lower strike anyway. That's what I'm saying. Did you go back and look and see what you would have been up in it? No, I didn't. Here, let's see if I, I can pull it up. I now. don't feel like, um, you know, punching myself, really. But but don't you understand? This is where you have to see, wait a minute. What was I thinking here? I should have just listened to her. That was crazy. But that's easy to do, isn't it, Melissa? You just hit the key and walk. And like I said to you, I could have just done that. I have done that. So, but... When you put me on the spot and asked me what I was doing with it. What did you pay for that one? I forget. What did you pay? I'm looking it up. Do you remember? Oh, uh, just a second. Uh, oh, you did it on you did it on Wednesday. You paid one something or two something, I think. I think it was the 272s. Yeah, it yeah. was the 272s. The, the price ranges from about 347, 377. 377. Okay, so you would have made, a, you could have made around 575. It was, it was almost about 580. So five, what did you pay for it? You mean the total figure? What did you pay oh. for the trade when you bought it? Do you remember your original cost? Well, I have several. I've got four different prices here. No, but the we, one that you took, the one that you took, fifteen, the fifteen hundred dollar yes, risk. Yes, yes, the fifteen hundred. I I don't have a set average price. Um, I think it was on the thirteenth. Average is three seventy four. Okay, so you would have made an extra two. So you would have made two. Two times you had four or five? I had four contracts. Yeah, so you would have made like 800 some bucks or something. Yeah. It was almost a thousand. Yeah. Anyways, if you had done it and you had held it Friday based on the market, I would have told you to hold it till Monday. Yes. Yes, I can see that. It closed high, and it gapped up off the market as well. So it looks like it will probably go that way on Monday. I mean, on Tuesday, because the market's closed, isn't it, on Monday? Yeah. But anyways, long story short, again, 
everybody lectured you about the fact you need to follow my system and nothing else. That's something that you're just going to have to decide in your own or not. But getting back to what I was saying, I was thinking about this morning, you can't allow money to control you because you are, and it's not going to, it's not going to result in the outcome that you want. I mean, I can't be any clearer. So it's, it's like a, you're, you're, it's like you're fighting against emotions and feelings and all and reality which is you look at your account and you have a certain amount of money and it's not as much as you want and you're worried about it i get all of that but that's where the tiger in you has to come out and you're you have to fight against it to create what you want even though it seems like how is that going to work i'm telling you that it does because when you stay in the mental state that you're at your account isn't going to grow does well, this make sense Yes, it does. I mean, I do consider that I am fighting because of the... Well, I'm fighting to maintain um, a stable risk to do, to do the right thing every time. Being consistent. Well, then fight but to do it. Fight to do am, it. Like, I am like fighting fight to do, fight to do it. it. Like, fight that thing inside of you that is wanting to screw it up, which is screwing it up. You take a trade to get out 200 bucks. You take a trade to get up $150. You take a trade to get out $300. And all of a sudden, your account's going to grow, 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 grow. You have to, you have, you're going to have to fight to make it happen. Hard. You have to fight hard to make it happen. If you don't want to take another trade that I say is great and risk $1,500, then fine. Then fight to make it happen with the size account you have instead of allowing it to control you. Yes, but that's exactly what I did the other day. I took another position. That was perfectly fine because you booked three hundred dollars lickety split. That was good. You have to keep doing stuff like that. Not taking your own trades though. Taking the ones I call, or unless you see a double one of something I called that you got out of, that's okay. But I'm just saying, you know, you have to stop letting the money control you, and you have to fight to grow it. You have to work really hard to grow that account as quick as you can, and you can do it. But yes. your attitude has a lot to do with it, and you. And I just want you to. Just think about what I said. <clears throat> I certainly will, yes. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.